So before today's episode continues, there is an elephant in the room that needs to be addressed. A very bad habit that I've picked up during filming. Um, My partner has made it clear to me that he noticed it. So I know it's only a matter of time before everyone else does. So I just want to address it. Um, I don't know if anyone's going to have health concerns for me, but I have this tendency to breathe very hard (laughs) when I'm filming. And the only explanation for that is, is that I'm anxious while I'm filming. So, you know, the reason that I'm anxious while I'm filming is because there's just so many people in the house and I have a thing about being heard while I'm being while I'm filming I just feel uncomfortable by it I don't really like when people know I'm filming or that they can hear me filming I just feel weird I feel watched so I just have this weird nervous tick where I'm breathing really hard while I'm talking and you know I'm fine my health is okay I just wanted to make sure like you guys know that I'm aware of it and it's something I'm trying to fix But it's just something I do, and I really edit it out of my videos the most that I can. But with this new series, you might see it more often, so I'm sorry if that makes it unbearable to sit through it. However, you know, just understand I'm anxious, but not so anxious that I don't want to film, because I love filming. Filming is very fun. However, I just get very anxious when I film, and especially when I feel like people can hear me. So whenever you hear me do that, you know, I'm not dying. I'm literally just anxious and (laughs) that's it guys you know i hope you enjoy the series and let's just go back to regular programming (laughs) all right guys today is the first episode of this series and i'm trying to do very chill vibe very chillax we're hanging out together i have some really bad news right now listen today's the only day i can film to be honest like without all the mess going around me and my keyboard does not want to connect to my ipad my mouse does not want to connect to my ipad and my awesome speaker that i invested in for this is not working today so this is what the setup should look like always but yeah my mic is not working i don't know if i called it a speaker by accident but i just wanted to show y'all what to expect we should be having audio from here but not today's episode of the series and um yeah what we will be doing instead is using our tiny mic and you know i've got my beverage here these videos are supposed to like be kind of long um so I, I did rack up on the drinks i'm not gonna lie i got my water here and my coffee yeah we're just gonna get into it we are as i said we're on reddit today so um it's gonna be reddit for a while until we can happily like hopefully get submissions on email as soon as possible um again if you want to submit a story or anything that you need advice on we put it on the screen here at the bottom the email to reach out to um a lot of the places that we will be looking in Reddit on to give advice would be like dating, relationship advice, Tinder, adult survivors. I just kind of followed a lot of pages that or joined communities that kind of people would act advice on. So if you have any Reddits that you would suggest, I also um, join uh let me know message me or comment below if you do want to follow me on reddit i'm new to reddit so please bear with me like i'm trying to understand i feel like i got a good grasp of it but i only joined seven days ago so like i'm really new but i'll put on the screen my reddit account um i've been giving advice you know writing it myself anyways um if you want to follow my reddit i am not anonymous on there i know i am coming as my youtuber self my goal was to give advice in live time and write it out and submit um for whatever reason it didn't work the other day but i'm hoping that today it will today i will not be doing it because my keyboard is not connected i will be keeping people anonymous i'm not going to read their reddit users um i'm just going to be reading their stories and giving advice we're gonna read it together um like i said in another video i really vibe with nikki 
Nikki Glamour, Roy Nikki. I really fuck with um Nikki Glamour and the Booty Child. And I know there's other YouTubers as well who do that where they get submissions and people give advice. But my channel's not that big, but I love to give advice. So I thought I would come on, you know, like I said, and use the the Reddit platform to my advantage while we get the ball rolling on submissions. I'm gonna crank up my mic here and um get started all right so we're gonna go ahead and start with the first look at me grabbing the mouse like it's gonna work all right so we're gonna go with the first one i am honestly under the advice tab and usually what i want to do in these series is kind of read the title see how long of the story it is and then kind of go in with the advice also this video series is really not made for kids like we're gonna talk about grown-up stuff i mean if you're 15 and over, it's nice to learn about certain things, but your own leisure, this is not something you probably want to play around your parents. Let's see. I'll, I'll keep it light for the first episode today, um, for the first story. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Okay, so of course this is posted by Anonymous, but we're going to read it word for word. I, 20 male, got me a dermatologist appointment and eye doctor appointment by my parents. Neither of which were needed or my idea. Now they want me to pay for what insurance would cover. First of all, <laughs> so this person is 20 years old and they are a male. I'm assuming they identify as he. Um, and they got a dermatologist appointment made by their parents, which he didn't ask for. But now the parents want him to pay. So my tea on that is like, first of all, do you have skin issues? Do you have like eye issues that you feel like aren't concerned, but maybe other people would like, and that's not me saying like, maybe you should appreciate it, but like, what is the reason for them doing that? You know, it's like, what comes to my mind is just like, and the fact that they want you to pay for it, I don't think it's fair because if they didn't have that talk with, to, with you about if that's something you want to do or not, then they're kind of messed up for that but the title and here's a little more information so now we're reading the stories <clears throat> my parents are well off combined they probably make 200k a year they've paid for all my medical costs in the past except for when i fed up with my acne and wanted to get proper acne medication oh except for when i was fed up with my acne okay so he did vocalize that he's fed up with his acne so you know, I think if we're just go bit just going based off that, it seems like it was a nice gesture for the parents to make that appointment for him. But the paying part I really don't know. But um we discussed beforehand, really, they just told me they weren't going to pay a dime and it was all on me since it wasn't health related. Just personal preference. I was just fine with that and it's about what I expected. Okay, so they kinda told you. It didn't really like happen randomly, but they kinda told you, you know what I'm saying? So it's like can't be mad if they told you it's not, not, not my advice on that but it says one month ago my biological dad who i live with and my adopted mother of eight years as well had skin cancer removed okay it was stage two and caused by sunburn of course i am predisposed due to my racial origins of extremely fair skin so my parents told me and coerced me into making an appointment and after i went they're telling me to pay them for it Um, I have an eye exam for glasses on Monday, and I have a sinking feeling that after telling me to make the appointment, we made the glasses discovery need over dinner a couple nights before that they'll make me pay for the glasses in the appointment. I don't need glasses. I've survived perfectly fine for several months since I first noticed a faltering in my vision. I guess I wrote it on Monday. I don't think it is. I mean, they probably told you to make the appointment because they noticed and something about you. Also, what if this is their way of, like, slowly just, like, dropping hands? Like, yeah, we're getting older now, so maybe you gotta start paying for this stuff. That's the vibe I'm getting. I don't know. He continues to go on. My adoptive mother, an accountant who handles most of the family finances now, says today that since I dropped out of college, it made me suicidal and I have loads of aspirations that I work day in and day out on. I chose to be an independent adult. Ever since I did 
he messed up here. I'm not. I'm confused. He said my adopted mother and accountant who handles most of the family finances now says today that since I dropped out of college, I chose to be an independent adult. Okay. He's saying now that his adopted mother was like, well, since you dropped out of college, that like, you can be an independent adult. That those two things don't correlate, and like, I just that's all I have to say about that. They don't correlate, so there's no need to be saying that. Um, ever since I did, they treat me like a failure. So ever since he did drop out of college, they treat me like a failure, hold my decision over my head, and don't believe that it made me. So that's my dad has a PhD in chemical engineering, and my mom an MACC, I don't know what that is, and certified CPA. Okay. Um, both of her other kids either dropped out or did nothing with their degree. I think they were hoping that I would do the same as well. Um, instead of ending up lime, ending up like my half siblings. I am my dad's only child as well. So going off of that paragraph, um, they probably just seem like the parents that want you to have your degree because they have it. And it's kind of clear in the pudding that the other guys, like, they don't they didn't do anything with their degree so i feel like you're trying to just be a step ahead out of me like i don't even like this college thing ain't work for me i'm gonna just save my money and time and just get out and like you have the right to that decision i always say um you know the reason i'm getting my degree is just for safety net like i've learned i've come to a realization you can get a job with or without a degree like a good or a bad one or good or a bad job with or without a good degree so it's like I don't know. I'm not, like, crazy about college. I mean, this is my last semester anyway, so I'm not going to obviously drop out of the last semester. Like, that would be ridiculous. Um, but let's finish the story up. I've been split on wondering if I'm actually spoiled, gaslighting, manipulated, or actually in the right when I say I think they're just being manipulated. Manipulate? Oh, my God. The way he wrote this. I mean, manipulated and abusive with how they're holding my financials hostage. When did you say they're holding your finances? What, because the mom is an accountant and handles the family finance? I mean, it makes sense she's an accountant. She's probably just trying to help. What I mean by that is I have about 3K personally saved to try and move out. 40K in retirement savings that could go in my pocket instead from parents and relatives and probably about 5K in apartment supplies and storage. If I move out from my parents on a bad note, they'll be able to strip me of everything. And every ounce of mon monetary stability head start that I may have ahead of me. I would love to just leave them and stake my own financial independence, but it feels idiotic to do. So with the chance at so much, what should I do? I probably miss details. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of sad. Why do you feel like you can't go? Like, have you ever just sat and asked, can I just get my money and move out? I'm sorry. Like that's the thing is like and then also you're triggered you're clearly triggered your money it, it seems like you have an issue with the money thing not the skin and the eye situation because it seems like you were triggered by them telling you, you gotta pay for this and then you're like man i want my money i just want to move out like you know and i get it because they're like being annoying um we can go see the comments as well people are telling me you're an adult you don't have to actually go to these appointments, duh, right? Like, you can just cancel them. Um, my question is, like, why don't you just ask for the money? You know what I'm saying? And just go. Are you a man? You're also a guy. I feel like guys have it easier than girls, too, to move out. But someone commented, so you're earlier not your parents weren't free at 20, dropped out of school, but your parents are unreasonable for asking you to get a medical appointment that you clearly need and pay for the deductible. It's clear that you have a pattern of not taking control over your own life. Yeah, I'm not getting positive vibes from this young man, and I'm hoping him the best. Um, I mean, I would just go to the appointment anyway, because you did say that you're annoyed by your issues. So just go to the appointment and just pay for it. Like, it's kind of ridiculous. Like, you, let's say you have an acne treatment that has to last five years. What do you, are you going to expect your parents to pay for your acne treatment at 25? Like, that's my question. Let's, let's go to the next story. Um, yeah, that was like light, but kind of gave me a headache because that was kind of annoying. Honestly, I mean, I don't know. Ooh, this one looks 
It's spicy. Okay, so the title of this one is I Warned Her. My ex, 29 female and ally, 29 male, met in college in 2013. I was 23, she was 22. We became fast friends and eventually we developed feelings for each other. We became a couple a year later. It was a great relationship and I don't regret it. Fast forward to 2016, I was home when she called me saying she was outside and we needed to talk. So I went outside and I saw that she was crying in her car. I went up to her and asked her what's wrong. She confessed that she cheated on me. I was shocked, hurt, and was teared up. I mean, it's like I'm getting mad for him. Like, oh my god, it's just so. It's just like this break up. She went on saying that we needed to break up because I deserve better than her, and that she de developed feelings for AP. I'm assuming that's the person's anonymous name <sighs> i warned her about rushing it with someone else and that a relationship that begins by cheating usually ends bad yeah oh wow it seems like it's the gag for me like hold on let me like hold this spot right here it's the gag for me that you're really giving her relationship advice on this new person i would have been like girl okay bye like figure out shit out if like you're a good boyfriend i feel like wait my ex I uh, 29 mil, you're the guy. So the guy's turning in the story. I mean, that don't make you a good boyfriend, but it makes you consider it. You clearly care about this girl, and I'm kind of sick for you. Because, I mean, that's what it seems like, right? Like, he's giving her advice on the future. Anyway, after we finished talking, I walked back to my house, but before I went in, I turned around to see her one more time, and she was still crying. Once I went inside, she pulls on social media saying, I wish I could just disappear with the crying emoji. Girl, it's like you weren't posting that when you was like, let's be, sorry, I get so much about this stuff, like passionate, it just pisses me off. I proceeded to remove her from social media after that, yeah, because you're being annoying, like, as I was mourning the end of my relationship, I also thought about how her new shit would blow up in her face. It's the karma for me, it's the, it's the, I know you mad for me, because I would have felt the same way, like, shut it up. Fast forward two years later, she messages me asking me to meet up because she wanted to talk. About what? About what? Like, I don't know. I knew the day had arrived. Okay, so I feel like you say, okay, so this girl clearly is over with her man. Like, so I met her at a diner. Oh, oh my God. What's going to happen here? I met her at a diner. I live in New Jersey, and she was miserable. She looked like she was crying before we met up. Um, when she saw me, she gave me a weak high and gave her a cold one she gave her him a week high she he gave her a cold look they surprised her and got teary-eyed i mean yeah because like you agreed to go out to get food with her so she's probably thinking like yeah i was gonna be cool chilling like it's been two years and you're over here like god what what um i started by asking her what she wanted to talk about she started saying that her and ap broke up two weeks ago and admitted that the relationship with him was horrible. This is why you can't have your cake and eat it too, babe. You should have just broke up with this guy, tried that out, and seen that it was an L, and then just end up single uh, completely. And no one gets hurt in the process. Like, I don't really, I mean, I think I don't get hurt in the process. But she also admitted the guilt of what she had did to me never went away and that I was right. And <laughs> she then noticed my emotions, expression, and turned away saying, I used to be so happy and silly at her seeing you like this. And I know it's my fault because of every day. And, hold on, that's my fault. Her seeing you like this, I know it's my fault because of my bad, selfish, and dumb decisions. She wants to say I'm sorry for everything. I thought about you every day for the past two years. Literally, it's like, if I linked up with an ex and he said that to me, I would have been like, okay, and... That's just, like, gross. Like, I'm not feeling her at all. That's just not it. I'm sorry. Um, she went to say, I'm sorry for everything. Yeah, I thought about you for the past two years. She then said, not only did I ruin us, but I lost my best friend. You were my best friend, and I ruined that. Yes, you did ruin that. She started crying again, saying, I'm not here to get back together because I don't deserve that. And have no right to ask that. So why did you mention it? I proceeded to say that it's true that you don't deserve your period. Period. 
It gets quiet if she turned away again. Yeah, what? My thing is, she's clearly coming with with some vibe. Like, she just has an intention. I think she did want to get back together or be friends and then lure you in. And this is why she's crying because she's like, oh my god, it's not working. Like, girl. She then, it says she then I said that she missed me and that she missed me for two years. And then she asked me to be friends again. I knew it. I told y'all. I told her I can't promise anything. She starts crying for the final time and I left the diner. As I was walking out, I turned over. She's still crying. How history repeats itself. Freaking gag. In the end, she didn't want to cheer and the victim. Never cheat. It's usually not worth it. Period, babes. Like, okay, so we've got also an edit that he edited it in. So because I got numerous requests, I'm going to post what happened after I left the diner. Yeah, you left us hanging there, bud. After I got home from the diner, she messaged me saying, if we become friends again, I will work my butt off to earn back your trust. And if not, please know I'll always be sorry for everything. Fast forward a year later, I bumped into her at a while by... Babes, it's the way everyone's writing on this app. <laughs> she bumped into her while buying lunch. Um, we caught up and I wasn't as cold as before. Oh, okay. I will admit, I'm a little embarrassed about what I did next. I offered her a friends with benefits with me and she accepted. It's the way I want to close this iPad. Because why would you do that? It's the way I want to cry for you. Because I know what's about to happen next is not pretty. It's like, I feel bad because you let her win. This is what she wanted. She got her cake and she gets to eat it too. Like, people that cheat deserve to not get a second chance. Like, that's just my take on that. Um, anyways, the Friends with Benefits lasted for a few months. Um, when I look back, I think I did it for closure and to show her what she's missing. No, it's like, you didn't show her anything. You just gave her more, more eggplant. Like, uh, it's like, and it's like she won, honestly. It's like she won, unfortunately. In my opinion, she won. Um, you feel like you're doing her a favor, like, showing her what she's been. I don't know if you were, like, playing hard to get during this. Like, I've never done a friends with benefit situation, so all I've ever heard is that it's annoying, it's shitty, and it's fun till it's not, is all I've ever heard. So I just don't even, you know, I never even had the chance to do that. But I wouldn't do it. I don't think I would do it. I ended it because I felt that I got my closure. So just say that you was thinking about getting more and you just it sounds like you're trying to rationalize it like you won like she got it she got her her w i think i don't know um she was disappointed but also understood when he was cutting her off um a few months later she started seeing someone new and they dated until early 2020 before the pandemic hit she showed up to my house unannounced and revealed to me that the new guy cheated on her with multiple women and actually blamed her for the cheating just like the ap the new guy broke up with her by text. Wow. She went on saying how much she hated herself for what she did to me, but now she understands how I felt. I gave her a hug and told her to take these lessons and never forget them. She thanked me and left. Fast forward. My camera can only record for 20 minutes at a time, so whatever. We're, we're back, though. I heard she's an IC. I don't know what that means or when she and remains single by choice. I saw her mother recently she for me. As for me, I'm single, working on myself. I'm getting into shape, and I'm working in psychology. Guess what inspired me? Thank you for reading my story. I appreciate everyone who read and replied. And then, <clears throat> the update area. Because he put it in the middle of the story, and it's just like, what? So, the AP was emotionally abusive. I know because my ex showed me her text, and it was full of, No one will ever love you like me, and you're ugly. <laughs> also, he broke up with her by text. Two, she did try reaching out to me multiple times during the two years she was with him. She asked how I was doing. I'm sorry, are you okay? And I ended up not responding. It's like the gag for me is too is like she's in a relationship. Why is she reaching out to her ex? What makes you think if you got back with her, she wouldn't be reaching out to these other guys? Like, hey P, I wish things could have been different. Like, how have you been doing? Like, it's just it's not, it's gotta go in the trash at this point, honestly. Um, friends and family actually saw her during the two years and they all said the same thing. She looked miserable and when she saw them, she would run up to them and ask how I'm doing and tell me that she would never stop being sorry. 
it's like at this point it's giving toxic for me because she's not letting you move on she's not letting you move on from what she did to you and the truth is she needs to let you move on from that because it's like she's she's doing two bad things at once she cheated and then she's not letting you move on sis let him move on because this happened in 2013 you guys met wait this happened 2016 they dated for two years so that's like even prior to 2016 and it's 2020 and you're still upset and i wish you didn't do the friends with benefits thing because i think that that really just dragged everything like oh i'm gonna get emotional for you because i'm sick it's like in that situation what you should have done was no i will not be friends with benefits with you stop talking to my family and my friends you know what you did, and everybody knows it. Like, and the fact that she had the balls to just be in people's face, like, oh, you know, like, I know what I did. Uh, like, it's giving corny. It's giving corny. Literally, let's see what people are saying here because she's sorry for herself and what she did to you. Period. What the hell? How long did it take you to move on? He said two years. Like, what really sucks for her is not only did she blow her relationship with you, she probably exhausted herself trying to make her relationship with AP work. And that's what I'm saying. She needs to just be single right now and figure out why she felt the need to cheat anyway. It's like, I wish she, I hope she had a talk with you before cheating, saying that she was just like not feeling a relationship anymore. So it wouldn't have come as such a big surprise. But it's giving me that she didn't. And also, I hope this doesn't ruin it for you with future relationships. Like, that's the thing. is like, I always feel bad for people that get cheated on because then it's hard to be in a relationship with someone who got cheated on because they don't trust you. And you just be like, bro, I don't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, she really, I hope she didn't ruin it for you and everyone else that comes with you, you know. And... We gotta move on to the next one, but that one really got to me. Like, I feel so bad. The next one. I, male 26, found video that was clearly posted without permission on a porn site of a friend. Female 27. Not sure how to go about getting taken it getting it taken down. Need help. My thing is though, like, did you watch? Did you watch the video? You have to watch the video to know that your friend was in it, right? Like, I don't think you could tell from the previews, like the little, the thumbnail. Assuming that's just like titties and below. I don't know. This is really weird. <clears throat> oh, this is crazy. Okay. Hello, I, male 26, recently came across a pornographic video of a very close friend. Um female 27 and her ex and i want it taken down well first things first before we even read this i'm sorry that you ran into that because i would have been thrown out like i would have been like you know and it's very hard because you can't just hit up your homegirl like girl is this you yes yeah, so. like what are you girl i don't i don't really know how you would allude to this to your friend i mean i think it's different if it's girls but a guy and a girl that might this one might be a weird one. Um, why do you want to take it down? What it did it not come across your mind that she maybe posted out her man? Why would you want to take it down? Do you like your friend? It's clear she is not consented to the sexual act or act of filming. The video is from years ago. I messaged the website the website of the where I found the video only to discover the video is across multiple websites, probably ten. current situation she doesn't know that i saw it she's currently in a new relationship and i'm clear if she's aware it's been uploaded so jumping back she is not consent to the sexual act or act of filming you gotta i don't know if you have to say more detail or what because how do you know she's not consented like is she drunk or blacked out you know um how did how does one know if they're consenting to be filmed like can you see it in her face so this tells me that you did watch. Um, you did. 
she doesn't know that I've seen it. So you did watch, and that's pretty weird. I mean, I'm hoping that you just watch for research purposes, and I'd understand. If you're watching to just make sure that you, it, you're sure it's her, I get it. If you're watching to offer yourself, that's fucking weird. I really hope that's not why you did that. But I'm pretty sure I shouldn't tell her, A, if she does... She doesn't know telling her might trigger being paranoid and depression. B, the situation does not improve if she becomes aware of the video if she doesn't already know and or she becomes aware a close friend has found said video. I want to help get the video taken down, but I am not tech savvy and cannot figure out where a video might be post posted elsewhere. How should I proceed? I am afraid that she might attempt or shut down if I tell her as her mental health has always wavered. In the video, she is coerced into the act and not violently assaulted. To give more context, I know her because I'm extremely close friends with her current boyfriend. While not as, important, as important, it's still a dynamic I have to consider. Were you cool with the ex too? I, I don't know what, what was that. I don't know. Um, later on i was able to get the website to take the video down there's so many more websites that have the video but still at least that's something i've done an hour search for copies of this there's too many websites there are two websites that are more popular have the most views i will be reaching out to her soon we don't live in the same town about a few hours away not sure if i should let her know over the phone or in person i'd like to hear your opinions here's my tea on that here's how i would hit up my friend are you girl you watch more right <laughs> girl you watch some videos right so you know like i'm really gonna tap into the vibe right now i'm gonna just be like okay this is awkward but i found this video like you know i watch sting you know and i don't know if you do but i do and uh, this is so awkward but i see all this girl that look like you and i was like what the hell like why does that look like you so i went because i was like gonna send you a screenshot <laughs> I'm gonna say screenshot and be like, girl, why does it like you? But when I clicked on it, it was you. And do you know that this video is like your secret is safe with me if you did consent to that being put up? But like, I just didn't know if you didn't want anyone to know. Like, like approach it like a very like like gentle very like oh is everything okay? Like I don't want to intrude. Like you're protecting her privacy. Make that clear that you're like. I don't want to be weird with you. I don't want to, like, if this is what you do on your free time, I don't want you to feel like I'm judging you, but did you mean what you meant? If so, like, let me know what to avoid so I don't do that again because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to <sighs> make our friendship weird. That's what I have the vibe I would come with. Could be 100% honest. That's what I would do. People are telling him. Um... I would hope you would tell your friends, basically. Your fears are valid and don't worry about how they see you. Call the police. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to call the police because if the police pull up to her door and they're like, man, are you aware of a video that's online? Like, she'll be like, and her world will be shook. Like, having the police come to your door and you don't know what's going on is scary as it is. It's scary as it is. You should tell her. It would be worse if she just found out by watching you. That's true. That's true. The last thing someone says, she has a right to her narrative. Period. And they're giving him as well, like, um, places and websites he could visit to help get things taken down where people think that um, people are not consenting. Girl, my room is so cold. Oh my God. Hey. I am so chilly. I hope you like the vibes though. We're kind of like cozy and up, chilling right now. Um, I think we should do two more, right? Like, I think that would be fine. I'm 24 and female, and I'm constantly painfully jealous of very beautiful women. Especially if they are also nice, slash smart, slash interesting. How can I get over myself and stop feeling this way? Going off the title. 24. You are painfully jealous. A beautiful woman but especially if they're nice and smart and interesting i just do you i know you're saying you're jealous but like do you hate yourself like not to be like mad aggie and say it like that but do you hate yourself like are you i don't i've tried not to come off as like um sarcastic but 
uh, maybe I'll rephrase it. Do you, are you not happy with yourself? Like, is there, are you not content with yourself? Because are the people around you making you feel like you are less than, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't want to assume because they're saying you're jealous because I have my times where I feel like I'm a really pretty girl and I feel like maybe some people might feel like that about me, um, where they're jealous about me and they say that I'm nice and smart and interesting. However, if I sit the room and there's another baddie, I do kind of feel like a little intimidated. So I'm like, damn sis, like, it's two baddies in here right now. You know, it's just, I don't know, that's just me, but I don't always feel like that. But you're saying you always feel like that. So I don't know. I don't know. Let's, let's read it. I feel bad slash envious when men talk about other women's beauty. Red flag, sister, because why? Why do their opinions matter? I had to grow up a lot to realize that men's opinion on beauty doesn't matter. There is someone out there for everyone, and remember that. These men, is there a men that get more screen time or voice time localizing their opinion on women's beauty or what is a defines a woman's beauty and those men are just kind of trash like let's be honest like have you ever read a real guy like a real man have you noticed he does not say this is what a beautiful woman is and this is not what a beautiful woman is like <laughs> real men like grown-ups don't do that so i'm wondering who you have around you the men that you have around you and you're 24 so these men should be kind of old around you um it could be any male, young or old. Okay. I just feel so jealous because I know I can't compete. I know this is a stupid thing. This is a stupid thing to get upset over. And consciously, I understand that many people will be more beautiful than me. And that men and women will always be drawn to beauty and talk about it. I am too. Or you're also drawn. Okay. I have no issue with it. Not. I have no issue with. Girl, what does it say? I have no issue with T not mean to these women or anything. I'm going to just give over that line because what? I don't resent them or feel like it's unfair. I know everyone has problems and being beautiful doesn't make you happy. I'm going to say this. Let me read the next paragraph. I just hate that feeling of being not as pretty and I feel like men are judging and ranking me. So we're going to just hit the hard breaks right now. I'm going to tell you something really quick. I had a friend who... Well, I don't want to say we fell out, but we just, like, don't really talk about because we don't go to college together anymore. But I had a friend for a short time. She's not my enemy. I just don't know if we're friends anymore. Like, no beef. It's just, like, we moved on. But she was honestly the prettiest friend I've ever had. Like, and I don't know if that sounds weird or anything, but, like, I can see people's beauty. And I think everyone is pretty in their own way or beautiful in their own way. I know it sounds corny, but, like, I'm, I'm being serious. Um, But she g gave me very model energy gave me very modeling tease and she did model and she was just this beautiful like six feet tall dark skin you know um curvy woman and had the perfect straight teeth like the dimple everything and if she watches the show I don't talk about but um she was very pretty and she confided in me and told me I hate that people only see me for my looks like it is so annoying going everywhere and being told you're pretty and i was like what what you mean you don't like that she was like no it's like it's not all it's cracked up to be it's really not i haven't even thought about celebrities too like kylie jenner for example what do you think it's like living like that like just feeling like if i don't look good today it's over for me like i'm not the prettiest woman in the world anymore and that's the truth for a lot of celebrities they catch you on a bad day it's over for you it's like Oh my god, like, look what, what's gone, through. like, what's happening to this woman, look at, why does she go so low, and it's just like, it sucks, it really sucks, um, so that's just some insight for you, like, just because people are pretty don't mean they always like it, and she told me, you know, it's sad because people assume me, like, they put my personality with my looks, like, no one gives it like no one even knows i'm smart because they just think i'm like a pretty dummy like that's it and i was like that's so sad because it's just sad it really it, like i felt for her honestly and then my other friend was like i don't feel bad for her like when i'm not friends with that girl anymore but beef yes beef but she was just like who complains about being pretty it's like i get it 
I get it. It's frustrating. You know, it's like, imagine it was me. I mean, I would be feeling myself, but <laughs> I understand. I do. So, with this girl, though, going back to the, I fantasize about what it would feel like to be beautiful and loved by a man. You know what? I used to feel like, and I'm going to be getting real, real, real with you right now. When I was younger, I thought my beauty was reflected in my size. And that was because of what people were telling me around me. And then when I got a man, and he's smaller than me, and I really think he's the finest person I've ever seen in my life. And that's like, I'm not being dramatic. Like, I would be honest if I've seen someone finer than him, but I really have not. And I'm like, girl, if I can pull him, I could pull anyone. Like, I'm clearly a baddie. Like, your beauty does not lie on what you look like, who your partner looks like either. Even though I know I just said that, if I could pull a fine guy, I could pull anyone. The truth is, you pull who you're meant to pull, like... You don't want to pull guys that just love you because of your beauty. That's weird. Like, yes, my man thinks I'm beautiful and thinks I'm, like, the best person he's ever seen in his life. But it comes down to personality at the end of the day. When you live with people, when you build a relationship, your communication styles, romance styles, love styles, love language, that all matters. No one... No one thinks about beauty when your man keeps forgetting to flush the toilet and you keep yelling at him about it. Like, he's not going to be like, but you're a beautiful woman, so I will listen to you. That's not how life works, and you got to get that out of your head. And I hope I'm making sense. Um, <clears throat> I idolize beautiful, beautiful women myself and love looking at them and being around them. And I can't imagine how much that feeling would be intensified if I was a straight male. It's giving lesbian tease. What was that? Okay. I wonder what it would be like to have that much kind of power over people and make them want you and make them want to be you. It's, I'm feeling like, were you not a popular girl in school? And this is coming from a not popular girl in school. However, in school, I had the ability to use my personality to be cool with the popular pretty girls. Even though I wasn't like all that in a bag of chips, like, I kind of look, know how to look better right now. But in high school, I'm pretty sure I did not look my best. It's giving, like, you're giving me a vibe that you... Because you're talking about the power you would feel and how people want you. And I feel like you feel like you wanted to be a popular pretty girl and you didn't get that chance. And it has, unfortunately, spread into your adult life. To be honest and that's really sad you shouldn't feel that way i hope you can like see me as your equal and say i want to be like that girl on camera right now who used to think that this and this and i am just pretty as is i don't i don't that's the only thing i could deduce from that paragraph there but she goes on to say it's not like i don't attract guys i do so why are we complaining sis is it because the guys you're pulling and you feel are ugly? I mean, I've been there where I feel like I'm pulling ugly guys and I'm like, girl, am I ugly? But you only give attention to the guys you give attention to. So I don't really... <sighs> they like me and I'm an easy target, I guess, because I'm nice and easy going. So you know that you look good and you know you have personality and you attract people. And they like that, but they will always be dreaming of every beautiful woman, I think. <sighs> but who told you that? You know what I'm saying? It's like, you're frustrating me. I hate watching TV now because all of the women are so beautiful and perfectly groomed. It's TV, sis. I'm going to need to get like a slapping board the way I keep slapping this, this, this desk. It's TV. Once you learn that TV, Instagram, social media, all of that is fake. You're groomed to look your perfect best. YouTube, all of it. I don't look like this every day. I'm trying to give you that illusion that I do look like this every day. My life is perfect and fine. But it's not as shitty and hot as this. And people on social media and TV are not perfect. And once you realize that, you will learn a lot and grow up a lot. And life will be much more easier for you when you understand that these people are just like you. 
trust me do my best but whenever i feel really good about myself i quickly see people way more beautiful and sexy and think to myself that in comparison i'm so much more plain so i'll also add that my therapist and i have talked about that i have an issue with comparing myself to people and that could be looks work ethic life placement um education anything i'll do it and she told me like basically life it gets easier when you don't compare yourself to people compare yourself to yourself compare yourself to the last version of yourself and just want it to be better for yourself don't compare yourself to other people you don't you all might want you might think that you want to be in someone else's shoes but then you realize that you probably don't because once you're in it you'll be humbled and you'll be like god i can't handle this like Imagine, imagine me and the pretty people, right? Let's let's say and think. Imagine me and the pretty people, and you got, you know, you got catcalling every day, every day. You're trying to try out for swelling bee. Oh, girl, you can't do no swelling bee. You dumb. You just pretty. Relax. And what is this this new facade thing going on? With Instagram model. Girl, you just an Instagram model. You're not a real model. How would that make you feel? Come on, like, you don't really know what you what you're signing up for here and I feel really sad that you're 24 feeling this one I think a big issue of this is you're also relating your worth to the approval of men and you gotta stop that and I find myself doing that before you gotta not do that you can do you come into this world with the man next to you no sister so please please someone commented find um a hobby of self-worth that has nothing to do with looks Mm -hmm. find different ways to feel confident about yourself yep i'll add on to that too like a lot of my confidence doesn't even come from my looks it comes from my work ethic and how hard i hustle when i complete stuff oh my god i feel like the baddest in the room period like i think of all the things i've completed in my life to now 23 23 and i've done a lot and i'd be kind of patting myself in the back like girl look at you go you know i'm pretty badass like yes i agree with that um i had to rewrite my thoughts yep someone said you rewrite their thoughts yep i have qualities that others desire yes and i've always read that too what you want someone else might what you have someone else might want and that's facts bro like what you have someone else might want what you hate someone else might love it's crazy it's really crazy when you realize that like you go so far ahead in life you will feel humbled you'll feel grateful for what you have trust me remember that like you're okay we're gonna do the last one because i've been having so much fun but i gotta do homework and i feel like i can do this all day also i lost track we do four or five today i don't know i am looking through my my stuff here because i have gone through my saves so we're now gonna go to the real time stuff and i'm just trying to look for something something spicy for us to end on tips for impressing a girl on the first date is the title of this one and it says tips to impress a girl on the first date any tips for the first date with an older girl what's the age difference so i 18 male match with this girl 20 a week ago why does that feel weird it's not but it's like if i'm 20 and an 18 year old hit me up i'll be like you buy it little <laughs> she was a bit hesitant at the beginning because of my age yeah it's getting very weird um after a bunch of chatting and phone calls we planned for a date she's really sweet and precious i really want this to work that's sweet that you called her precious We've both been single for more than a year and haven't been on dates since the lockdown. I neither went on a date with a girl older nor one that I have met purely online. This is too first for me. On top of all of that, she's a tad above my league. So I really nerd. What do you mean? She's a baddie and you feel like you're not? Like, shut up. I'm asking you, my fellow Redditors, for, an, uh, for any kind of advice or input you think might help. Um, she has, she's older and hotter and I'm nervous. <laughs> Don't say that on the first date. That's my first tip, cause cause your age is showing. One, two. I mean, basically, what first date advice? You know, well, let's see what people say. Someone's a be yourself. She don't like who you really are. Then it will never work. Don't waste your time wearing a mask. Why do you say that? <laughs> um, 
Okay, if y'all looking for something deep, then just open doors, watch your language, and try. And don't try to bang on the first date. Remember that good guys are hard to find. You're the one that's more valuable here. Why is he the one that's more valuable here? It's giving masculinity. This was posted 40 minutes ago too. So, um, you guys have clearly tried it before. It says here you guys have done a bunch of chatting and phone calls and you plan for a date. So did you guys not specify where? So it seems like you guys haven't specified where, I'm, I'm assuming. But with first dates, you know, you're going to be nervous regardless. It just happens. And don't think too much ahead into the future because that's me. I just, my mind thinks quicker than my mouth. And it's kind of crazy. And I could be like saying one thing that I'm already thinking about wedding bells. Like, that's the kind of vibe I am. So, unfortunately. But take your time. You are a guy. I'm assuming it's kind of different uh, from what I've seen when it comes to dating. She is 20, so she might have more experience than you talk about experiences experiences talk about life talk about you know um interests do something you both could like laugh about in the future is what i would say and talk about what you've texted about you know like a really fun um conversation started for me is astrology like i really feel like you can't go wrong with that if y'all don't like astrology, talk about why y'all don't like astrology. Like, that's all I can think about. Another good one, I feel like, is TikTok. TikTok has a lot of content that's really funny or really serious. If you guys just chat about that or watch videos together, um, I think that helps ease the stress off. I, I know when I went on um, a date with my boyfriend before we were official, like, we were kind of nervous. And I did show him memes on my phone. And, <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to lighten up the mood and just, like, we can just relax and laugh you know what I mean and talk about what we just saw and then when you do that too it's like now you guys have like memes that you enjoy together so you could do that um <clears throat> in person just be yourself bro like just be yourself period always be yourself always be yourself just keep it cool be cool you know don't think too much about her looks either like don't do that and like I said don't tell her she's older hotter and I'm nervous because that's just weird the 18 to 20 ratio is just really uncomfortable for me so guys i kind of want to do it if you watched this whole segment and see that i'm freezing at this point thank you so much for watching i'm so excited for the series that's it like i'm so excited i hope you guys like the setup i hope you guys like the feng shui's room the little mic we will have a mic set up here my mic i, I gotta figure it out it's giving me issues, but we're going to figure it out. Again, if you want to submit your own story for advice, down below right here. I do not have a limit on how long your story can be. I did think that today's story was going to be longer, but it's, it was giving me a medium link vibe today. So, I don't know, but send in your tea. I will help you. We will give you advice. People in the comments will give you advice. If you guys in the comments have ever gone through anything I read today and you want to write about how you feel about it, mention it down below. You know, say story one, story two, whatever. I would try to put timestamps on what, you know, everything that I read with the titles. It was so much fun. I'm so happy and excited for this series. And I cannot wait to see what we end up doing with this. Um, I will miss my little tiny mic though if I do fix my my big mic my professional mic but um other than that thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like share and subscribe i'll see you guys in the next video peace